may be seated. <laughs> Say again, Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now I gotta say, today is my favorite day of the year. Of all days, this is the, the most great. I mean, it's better than my birthday. It's better than 4th of July or New Year's. It's better than Christmas. It's better than my anniversary. Oh, wait. Honey, I love you. <laughs> but today is amazing. The flowers, the sights, the clothing, the food, the gathering together with other of our family in Christ. I think we've been looking forward to this day for weeks, months, well, through the season of Lent, right? And now it's finally here. This day is amazing. Now, there's a Catholic monk named Father Pennington. He had an encounter with a Zen teacher. He had gone to a retreat, and while he was there, one of the points was they were to meet with this teacher throughout their time. He went in for the first visit with the Zen teacher, and the teacher there was rocking back and forth with a big smile on his face. He said, I like Christianity, but I would not like Christianity without the resurrection. I want to see your resurrection. Now, Pennington noted that with this directness of the question, the teacher was saying what everyone implicitly says to Christians. You are a Christian. You are risen with Christ. Show me, and I will believe. That's how people know the resurrection is true. Does it affect how we live? So, how does Easter impact your life? Does the resurrection of Jesus change your life? Does it mean something more than just the opportunity to come early in the morning out from God's creation? Or to find Easter eggs? Or to have meal with friends and family? Or to even eat the little heads off those marshmallow peeps? <laughs> For years, the church has called the Sunday after Easter, Low Sunday. And I guess that's a way of saying that if Easter is really the high point of the whole year, anything that goes back to the ordinary is fairly low. But if we're serious about Easter, and about living the news that Christ has actually risen, then there wouldn't be any low Sundays. There wouldn't be any low days at all. You see, even though Easter is the high point of the church year, it's not the end of the church's high holy days. It's just the beginning. So today we're reminded how Mary of Magdalene and the other Mary went quickly to the tomb. Just as dawn breaks, that's why we have a, a sunrise service. These women had stayed near Jesus for most of his ministry. They had watched him as he had been whipped by the Roman soldiers, flogged. They watched him be nailed to a cross. They watched him die. They watched Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus take his body down, wrap it in a linen shroud, and lay it in a tomb. They watched as a large boulder had been rolled in front of it, and that tomb had been sealed. They had watched out of duty out of love, out of loyalty. And now they had just one more act of love, of service to perform. So put yourself in the shoes, or I should say the sandals, of those women on that Friday. You see, they were grieving, unable to be comforted. They were weeping, they were rending their clothing. But the Sabbath was near. And although they stayed as long as they could, they had to go back to their homes their families, to their lives. Their mourning had to be put on hold until all the requirements of the Sabbath were completed. By Sunday, they just couldn't wait any longer. So they ran down to the tomb, remembering Jesus' life and their loss. Now, this would be their last ritual, the embalming and caring for his body. After this, Jesus would be a, a memory, and there'd be nothing more. But instead of a quiet tomb, the women get an earthquake, a majestic, radiant messenger of God. They get a empty tomb and a magnificent pronouncement. One quick glance in the tomb, and they realize their agenda for the day, for the year, has changed dramatically. It is no longer an ending. This is the beginning, the beginning of a new world. A world in which the resurrection is a reality. A world in which death has been destroyed. A world in which Jesus lives forever. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. Indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, a number of years ago, there was a slogan that many Christians would wear on t-shirts or on hats or even on bracelets. 
It was WWJD. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Remember what it stood for? What would Jesus do? Now, it was a way that as a Christian, when you would go through your life, you would consider the problems or the decisions that you face. You would say, well, under these circumstances, what would Jesus do? And you would seek to act that way. Now, what would Jesus do has kind of a problem to it. You see, it's a question in the wrong voice. It's a question you would ask of a dead person. It's a question that would say, what would Jesus do? would be, seem like Jesus is no longer in the picture. Just a historical figure. It puts the entire burden of the past and present and future decisions all upon our own frail and our imperfect sh shoulders. WWJD, what would Jesus do, puts Jesus in the past, and it forgets about Easter. You see, Easter puts Jesus in our lives, in our past, in our present, in our future, in our forever. For Christians to understand the life-breathing power of Easter, the question is never a hypothetical, what would Jesus do? But actually a WIJD, what is Jesus doing? You see, what would Jesus do is a question of a mourner trying to preserve a memory of a loved one. What would Jesus do would have been a question that two Marys would have been asking after grieving all day at the tomb, and Easter had not intervened. But instead, the two women, they see and they hear the miracle of the resurrection. Instead, they run and they tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. And what happens to them? They run smack dab into Jesus himself. Instead of feeling lost and fearful, what would Jesus have us to do no, now they experience the risen Christ. What is Jesus doing? Well, Jesus is telling us to get out of the empty tomb and go out and tell the good news. Jesus is telling all of us that we are to join him on a new beginning, on a new mission. You see, Easter is not about mourning the memory of a dead person or remembering the teachings and life and works of Jesus. If that all was Easter had to offer, we have a lot better things to do than come out here on a cold Sunday morning, right? Easter proclaims that Jesus Christ is risen. 2,000 years ago, but also today. We live in the reality of the power of Christ's resurrection. Jesus is alive. Not just for his disciples who are fearful and hiding in a room in Jerusalem, but for each and every one of us today and every day. You see, we never have to ask, what would Jesus do? but rather recognize what is Jesus doing? What is Jesus doing among us today? What is Jesus doing in our church at Galilee? What is Jesus doing in your life? What is Jesus doing in your family? What is Jesus doing in Pasadena or Glen Burnie or Severna Park or in Millersville? What is Jesus doing in your office or in your school? What is Jesus doing in your wallet? What is Jesus doing in your heart. Now, Winnie the Pooh was a character that my wife had in all of our kids' nurseries. And it was one that we loved. We would always look at the Winnie the Pooh stories. There's one that I will not forget, where you had Pooh and Piglet walking down a tree-lined trail. And it was in the evening. Now, they were in silence for a while. And then Piglet looks up to Pooh and says, when you wake up in the morning, Pooh, what's the first thing you say to yourself? Who obviously says, well, what's for breakfast? <laughs> Who then looks over at Piglet and asks, and what do you say, Piglet? Piglet says, I say, I wonder what exciting thing is going to happen today. What a great perspective. You know, each morning when you wake up, or every moment throughout the day, begin by asking yourself how the resurrection impacts your life. And say... Well, on this day, what is Jesus doing? What exciting thing is going to happen today as he lives through me? Or better yet, as the Apostle Paul writes it, if you that have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. For Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.